Friday, everyone. Um, so, today, so today we're going to be making uh, scalloped potatoes. So in the comments, someone had mentioned that they'd like to learn how to make scalloped potatoes. So that's what we're going to do. Um, again, if anyone wants to learn how to make something, just fire a message this way and uh, you'll probably see it. Um, I'm always looking for ideas and may as well have ideas that will uh, definitely help you guys out or learn how to make things that you guys want to learn how to make. So let's get started. So four scalloped potatoes you're going to need. And this is we serves about six people. You'll need about three pounds of potatoes, peeled or not peeled, it's completely up to you. A quarter cup of flour, a quarter cup of butter or margarine, two cups of milk, a teaspoon of nutmeg, two cloves of garlic, one large onion diced, and a cup of broth, be it vegetable broth or chicken stock. All right, well, let's get started. So first thing we have to do is we have to slice our potatoes nice and thin. You can do it by both ways. You can either do it on your mandolin or you can do it with a knife. So if you're going to do it with a knife, all you want to do is you want to cut them about an eighth of an inch thick, kind of like that. Now that takes a while, but it's totally doable. Or you can grab a mandolin like this. A mandolin is really nice. There's all kinds of different varieties of mandolin. This is the one that we have here. It's uh, the uh, Coulinart version. Really simple to use. All you do is you bring it up to your eighth of an inch thick right here and then we start slicing it. So before you start slicing you want to make sure you have a glove, a Kevlar glove, or one of these uh, guards here. Um, when I use the guard I don't put it on right away because I find it cumbersome. But what I do is I start cutting and as soon as I feel that my fingers could be in jeopardy, well then I just kind of uh, put the guard back on. So it's really easy. All you do is you just kind of slide it across and always pay attention to your fingers because these things are nice and sharp. And I have got scars from when I was cooking in kitchens. So see right about here? I'm saying, all right, it's time to put that guard on. And these guards have spikes on them. So you just pop that on and you keep on slicing. And then you end up with something that looks nice like this. All right. So I don't like using the guard <laughs> at all. I find it very cumbersome. I'm just gonna keep on doing this. So. As I'm cutting this, um, you may be wondering, uh, what's the difference between a scalloped potato and a potatoes au gratin? Um, the difference is cheese. That's all it is. So an au gratin, what you would usually do or typically do is there'd be uh, cheese in between the layers of potatoes. Um, but for scalloped potatoes, um, there's no cheese unless you want to add them to it on the top. Um, and like I said, this is the way I make scalloped potatoes. It's not like way other people will do it so I really don't layer everything up and you'll see and you notice the way I'm cutting them too I'm cutting them into rounds like this. I'm not cutting them into longer pieces. You can do that if you want. It really doesn't matter. Aesthetically, I just like it this way. There we go. And you'll also notice that I'm going faster when it, and as soon as it gets smaller, then we... Now you can add different things to your scalloped potatoes. It doesn't just have to be regular old white potatoes. Um, you can make uh, a beautiful scalloped potato with uh, sweet potatoes. Works out really, really nice. All right, so we've got our potatoes nice and sliced right here. So this is a good start for our scalloped potatoes. So we'll just get a pot, put it on medium high heat. And we're going to add our quarter cup of butter or margarine. 
we're gonna let that melt out. I should have turned the pot on a little bit before hand, but oh well. It's all right. So scalloped potatoes, great um, with uh, Sunday dinner if you're doing ham, ham and scalloped potatoes. That's definitely a maritime thing. Um, I like or any kind of dinner, really. It's just a different way to uh, to make potatoes more interesting. Um, there's a million ways of doing potatoes. This is just one of them. And I happen to like it a lot. Um, it's really nice the next day, too. They're nice and warm, but I like taking out a slice and then putting it back in the oven, putting a little cheese on it, and turning my scalloped potatoes into an au gratin the next day. They're perfect for a potluck if we ever get to do those again. <laughs> You're right. They are perfect for a potluck. Everyone likes a good scalloped potato. Yeah, I wonder if those are ever going to happen again. It's like the birthday cake thing. Can you imagine that someone blew on someone's candles? <laughs> and then people ate the cake afterwards? Colleen says, thank you for sharing these wonderful recipes. Oh, no, no problem, Colleen. All right, so our butter's nice and melted. To that, we're going to add our onion. And our garlic. Garlic completely optional. For me it's not, but for if, if you're not into it, they always say more garlic the better. You can also add herbs to this as well. So you can kind of put some thyme or some oregano and kind of fancy it up. If you wanted to put some red peppers or mushrooms or anything into it, it's completely up to you. You can change the recipe. Today I'm just showing you how to make a real simple, plain, cost-effective um, scalloped potato and everything you see here we would probably get you in your box if you're coming through the uh, greener village to uh, to grab a hamper all right there we go so all you're going to do is you, you don't want to get any color on this you want to basically what we're doing is we're making a nice white sauce um it's not quite a bechamel a bechamel is, is just a, a milk sauce um but we're making like that a nice creamy white sauce. So you don't want to brown your onions or anything. So you just want to get them nice and translucent, kind of like that. And then we're going to add our flour. So you put equal parts fat and flour. So there was a quarter cup of butter in there. I'm putting out a quarter cup of flour. And then we're just going to mix it together. Now that's called a roux. And a roux thickens stuff kind of like a slurry does. But with the roux, you're getting a little bit more flavor because you're kind of putting a little bit of heat to your flour. Um, for this sauce, we don't want it to brown up, so I'm not going to cook it all that long, so we're only going to make a white roux or a blonde roux. Now, if you want to make a darker roux, so say you're making a, a gravy or something like that and you're making a roux, what you'll do is you'll cook this down and it'll get nice and brown and you'll uh, probably pull some nutty notes, nutty flavors from the flour. Okay, so we've got our roux right here. It's come together. Now, I'm going to add my milk just a little bit at a time. So I'm just going to line the bottom with milk and then mix it up. This, is, this way we will ensure that you're working all the lumps out. Now, it's kind of hard to see because we have a few onions in here, but you'll have a good feel for it. You don't want any dough boys in here at all. So there we go. It's nice and thick. And we'll add another little bit. So I usually do it in threes. Uh, like I said, work out the lumps. Now you don't want to use a whisk for this because then everything will just get caught up in the tines. So, just a little bit of time, scraping the bottom, making sure that we don't have anything sticking. Adjust the heat if it's too hot, or pull it right off the heat if you find it's too hot. That way it'll cool it down quicker. Especially if you're working with electric stoves, it takes time for the heat to adjust. So we'll just pull that off. We'll add the rest, the remainder of our milk. There we go. And keep on mixing. Now this time I'm going to put a little bit of salt. No, probably about a teaspoon or so. Some pepper. Same. It's really to taste. 
Then I'm going to add a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, definitely an option to add nutmeg if you don't have any, but it's just nice. It's a classical French white sauce smell, and it really will kind of change up the, tip, the taste. It's that flavor that you don't know is missing until it's not there. All right, into that, we're just going to add our 250 milliliters or a cup of a vegetable broth. Again, chicken broth works well, but you're looking for a whiter broth. So you're not looking for a beef broth or anything like that, or a mushroom. Those are a little bit deeper and darker in color. And there we go. We're going to let that thicken up a bit. Now, the pan, what you're gonna do is you're going to grab some pan spray and you're gonna spray it really, really well. This is gonna save you some scrubbing later, I promise you. And get it right on the sides and right over the edge. Now, some people, and this is where I differ when, I, when it comes to making solid potatoes, some people will line it like this and keep on lining and then add a little bit of sauce and then keep on lining. It looks really nice aesthetically. Um, I'm not really worried about that because it will all taste really good. So all I do is just put the potatoes right into the mixture. And coat them up. Now I used to line them like that. But then I was working at the hospital where I was making probably about 12 hotel pans of them. And for me to take every single one and do that was a complete waste of time for me. So we used to put them in big steam kettles and then just put cases and cases of potatoes right in there. So you just give it a good stir. Leave it in the heat a little bit and wait till it starts to bubble. Kelly says, Andy and I say you are the best. Oh, well, thank you, Andy and Kelly. And Carrie says, yum, she can smell the garlic from here. Ah, yeah, yes. There we go. We're going to leave that for a little bit. And then I'm going to grab a rubber spatula to make sure that I get everything out of here once it starts. Shen, if you want to get right in here and you're going to start to see it, you see it's starting to heave a little bit. So you're getting a little bit of movement right here in the corner. See, now we're going to start seeing little happy little bubbles happening right there. And that's when we're going to just turn the pot off. And as simple as that, we're just going to slide that right into our casserole dish like that. sure you get all that good stuff on the bottom we don't want to miss out on any of that now I was using 2% milk to make this but you can use uh, you can use cream if you'd like 10% 18% 35% cream if, you, if you'd like um, I've also added I've also added sometimes a little bit of sour cream to the mixture as well it gives it a really nice tang and there we go, guys. That's pretty much it. There you go. So then you grab that, you put your oven up to 350 degrees, and then you grab a piece of foil, you wrap it all up, and then you set it in your oven covered. Convection, 350, start. You should probably warm your oven, but because we've been making scalloped potatoes to show you the finished product, um, my oven's still hot. Okay, so 350 degrees for 45 minutes. After 45 minutes comes, you open it up, you pull the foil off your potatoes, and you let them sit for another half hour, uncovered at 350. And then when the alarm goes off for those ones, then you just Turn your oven on to broiler for five, six minutes, and you brown the top, and 
you'll end up with something that looks just like that. Mm. Lovely scalloped potatoes. Now, if I was going to make these at home, I'd probably throw them into a, into, a, into a gratin. So before I put the broiler on, I would grab some cheese. Any cheese, your favorite cheese, sprinkle it on top, slide it in the oven, and let that cheese bubble up and under the broiler for three or four minutes. And then you'll end up with something... Gordon says good morning. Good and morning. Amy says, oh, this is my idea. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. So, all you're going to do is grab it. And then you get yourself a lovely, mm. lovely scalloped potato. Right like that. Nice slice of ham. Some peas, some carrots. And there we go. And there's dinner. All right, and that's it. So next week, guys, tune in. Um, you may have seen some of the posts yesterday on Facebook because today is Chinese New Year. So Happy New Year to everyone. Um, we have a special guests coming in. So uh, Wu and her husband uh, and, uh, and their friends came in yesterday and they made us a beautiful feast. And I asked them if they were willing to share uh, their dumpling recipe with us next week on Friday and they gladly enjoy it too so why don't you tune in next week and we will be making dumplings and uh, they'll show you how easy and how simple it is to make there's a few tricks I'm not quite apt at wrapping but patience is your virtue and uh, but I'll try again and we'll see how I do this time see if they laugh at me again um, anyways tune in next week we'll be making uh, dumplings um, and we'll show you how to uh, make a whole mess of them with a bunch of friends. And then you can freeze them and use them for, for later and eat them immediately. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Friday.